extend that mic. You want to just come in a little closer? Good afternoon. Deputy Commissioner Marion Ryan, the commanding officer for the RCMP in Alberta, will speak in response to the re release earlier today of the Civilian Review and Complaints Commission for the RCMP and the chair initiated complaint and public investigation into RCMP seizures in High River, Alberta. Following the commanding officer's remarks, I will acknowledge your question by pointing at you. I would ask that you please identify yourself by name and the agency that you represent. Now. Good afternoon. I want to take you back to Wednesday, the 19th of June, 2013, when a slow-moving, intense, low-pressure system brought 80 to 275 millimeters of precipitation with localized amounts up to 325 millimeters along the mountains and foothills from Edson to Waterton National Park in Alberta. This high precipitation resulted in multiple serious flooding events across southern Alberta. Rivers that were already experiencing high water levels began to flood. Several major transportation corridors had been closed off as a result of the flooding, and several communities were either cut off or at risk of being cut off. These included the communities of Canmore, Banff, Exshaw, Black Diamond, Turner Valley, Kananaskis, and Bragg Creek. 32 local governments in southern and central Alberta declared states of local emergency. Power and communication services were disrupted throughout the affected area. 28 local emergency operation centers were activated as water levels rose and numerous communities were placed under evacuation orders. Most of these communities fell within RCMP jurisdiction. Of these cities and communities impacted by the floods, the town of High River was hardest hit and therefore required the most significant RCMP response. By Thursday morning, the weather situation worsened dramatically and the evacuation of High River's 13,000 residents began. Throughout the day, a steady stream of calls for service were received at the local detachment and at the High River Emergency Operations Centre, with reports of people swept away in floodwaters. Land rescues quickly became extremely dangerous, with rescuers in some instances needing assistance themselves, and approximately 600 rooftop rescues took place with the assistance of a private helicopter company and later the assistance of the Canadian Forces. During one point in the operation, as many as 65 people were reported missing in High River, many of them elderly. Six cadaver dogs were deployed to assist in the search. Over 300 people remained within the evacuation zone in High River despite being urged by authorities to leave for their own safety. Over the next 48 hours, the RCMP, at the direction of and in consultation with the Town of High River Emergency Operations Centre, began the execution of three plans simultaneously, namely rescue, recovery, search, and security. From the time those first calls came in, the RCMP's number one priority was to save and preserve human life in High River. Today, we are here to talk about the CRCC's interim report's findings and recommendations that come as a result of their independent review of the RCMP flood response in High River. I want to start by saying that our thoughts and deepest condolences are with the loved ones of those who lost their lives in the flood. Although I'm here to address matters of public safety, anything we discuss here today pales in comparison to their loss. I also want to acknowledge the citizens of High River for the understanding and support they continue to afford the RCMP. They have stood with us through the hard times and the RCMP continues to work with the community of High River as it recovers from the disaster. The reality is that emergency first responders sometimes have to take extreme steps to ensure public safety, steps which can have unintended impacts on people's lives. 
High River taught us that it is not only what you do, but how your actions are perceived, especially in times of crisis. My hope is that the CRCC's interim report will finally provide them with a clearer picture of why things happened the way they did, despite the best of intentions. Much of the public commentary around High River to date has focused on gun seizures and property damage, and this was based on legitimate public concern. Independent review of police actions is critical when public trust is at stake, and that is why the CRCC's independent review is so important to the RCMP. It is now up to the Commissioner to review the interim report's findings and submit the RCMP's official response to the CRCC. For that reason, I cannot speak to the specifics of the report, but I can speak in general terms about the things that we have done in Alberta since June of 2013 to ensure the RCMP in Alberta is better prepared to deal with local emergencies going forward. I can tell you that the report's findings specific to Alberta come as no surprise to me because our own review of the operation has been underway for a year and a half now. Since June of 2013, emergency management policies related to search and rescue and evacuations have been revised. We have set and are achieving aggressive targets for employee incident command system training. We have completed an extensive review of, ex of our external communications capacity and are working swiftly to enhance our effectiveness in the area of public communications. I can also say that I am very pleased that the report's findings speak to the heroism, dedication and professionalism demonstrated by RCMP employees in the face of an unprecedented natural disaster. Whatever the tone of the public conversation around the interim report may be, the indisputable truth is that our first responders risked their own safety to ensure that no citizen was left behind in the flood-ravaged community and did their best to ensure public safety after the floodwaters subsided. It is important for Canadians to remember that the RCMP's objective in High River was to prevent the loss of life and to ensure public safety in that community. We achieved that. We also learned a few important lessons along the way, and I can assure you that here in Alberta, we are better prepared for the next time. There's an opportunity for some questions. Yeah, right here. Your name yeah, and uh, John Carter, from the Canadian Press, Deputy Commissioner. Yes. Um, in general terms, is the RCMP sorry for the way the Mounties handled any of the firearms seizures in High River during the flood, especially people who suffered property damage to their homes as a result of the siege? We know that many people were upset with the property damage that was incurred and um, why and how we conducted our searches. I will say that we, for any, any, um, any damage that uh, people felt was unnecessary, we'd like to offer an explanation for it first. And if, um, if they still feel that, uh, you know, there is an apology owed, I think we, we do owe them that if, if, it's, if it's unexplainable. I can't say 100% of what we did was flawless. I can't say that. I know there were mistakes made. We need time to drill down on the report and figure out exactly where those mistakes may or may not be. Um, and if a homeowner is owned, owed an apology as a result of our review, I think we should do that. Great, you all then, Mr. Son. I was hoping you could speak to why the RCMP saw necessary to seize these uh, guns from people's homes in the first place. Okay, sure. So. As I said in my statement, our, our focus was on going in and um, checking homes to see if anyone was stranded. In a situation like this, it was unprecedented in terms of the amount of rain and precipitation that was coming down. Even the helicopter pilots reported to me the visibility was horrendous. So you have to imagine the scene at the time. People were, we knew that there were people unable to escape from their homes because of the fast flowing waters. They may have gone to the front door 
on one on one occasion went back to grab something came back and the water was too high they couldn't get out the front door so they flee to the second floor maybe they can't get out to the roof we also know that high river is a is a very peaceful uh, community where um, people go to retire because uh, it's such a lovely peaceful community so we knew that there is a significant population of uh, more senior citizens there so in order to um, ensure that no one was left behind and no one was trapped and we did find many people we did find many people as a result of us going back and checking the homes as we entered homes looking for people we found unsecured firearms and by law we are obligated to do something with those firearms if they're unsecured um, we know for example that many there is a market for stolen firearms and we know that people do steal firearms as I mentioned there were 300 people in the community that uh, we knew were at least 300 in the community that we knew were still in the community and we knew the risk of a break-in was still relatively high so in order to protect those firearms and protect the, the community we took those firearms and secured them and put processes in place to return them to the owners as soon as possible okay. thank you very much everyone oh, sure. So today we're talking about the CRCC uh, report, but I will tell you that they're, they're, the ACP really has no position. You should talk to the individual chiefs of police, because as a collective body, we don't have a position as the ACP. And, and uh, I would strongly recommend you talk to the chief of Edmonton Police, uh, where the story broke. Just thank you very much. All a question on the flood on the ground here. No, I don't. Um, as I mentioned, um, as you know, as the report is reviewed and, and as the final report comes out, I'm quite confident that you will hear, not just with the RCP but other first responders, acts of heroism that you know uh, will me really make any any Albertan, any Canadian proud. Um, our sole intent, as I said, our number one priority was to save lives. And I think the fact that we weren't prepared with the firearm seizures sort of speaks to that. We are prepared now to deal with those types of situations. Because it was happening so quickly, norm we, we, we experience floods here in, in Alberta all the time, but nothing of this magnitude that required us to act so quickly and take such aggressive action. So what our folks did was, with the very best of intentions, we rescued 28 people who were trapped in their homes. Um, as I said, there were over 600 rooftop rescues. Um, the acts of, of, uh, of heroism and um, just uh, you know tremendous uh, pride that I have in the efforts that our folks took um, is uh, something that I've never seen. Uh, our folks were uh, wearing hip waders and got into trouble because the hip waders took on water and they could have been swept away. They fell through uh, floorboards in the house, you know, uh, and as, as I say, risked their own lives. There, there are situations where mem uh, members of the public were floating. Our members grabbed them, pinned them to a tree to, um, uh, tr to try to uh, keep them safe until a boat could rescue them. Um, those types of things. But it was a valid response. The firearm seizure was a valid response. That's I, I, absolutely. And, and the report says that. The report says that we acted within the scope of the law to uh, seize those and, and secure those weapons. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very okay. much. Are there any questions off I'll say? Ma'am? I could just ask you just to come back. Just one question for French, and then that's quite all right. No. So if you just ask the question. Was it in French? Yeah. It's in, no, the question's in English. Okay. Okay. 
Sure. Um, generally speaking, we find the report to be a balanced report. Um, we respect the uh, scope and the volume of work that was involved for the CRCC to, to put this report together. As I said, it was an unprecedented event. It's going to require unprecedented number, amounts of paper and volume of reports. So generally speaking, um, we respect the report. We found it to be a balanced report, and um, we look forward to addressing the recommendations. En général, ce que le député commissaire nous dit, c'est qu'on respecte beaucoup le, le rapport qui a été émis par le commissaire. Euh, on trouve que c'est un rapport qui est bien équilibré, euh, qui euh, fait état de, des bonnes choses qui sont sorties de, de l'intervention policière. Euh, pour ce qui est des, des recommandations et tout ça, bien, ça va être examiné plus en profondeur par notre commissaire et une réponse formelle va être donnée éventuellement. Mais on, on est satisfait des résultats du rapport puis on, on comprend très bien que c'est un événement exceptionnel qui s'est produit euh, à High River. Um, rares sont ces, sont ces événements-là où la police doit intervenir de façon massive telle qu'on a dû le faire uh, pour uh, sécuriser les citoyens puis protéger les, les propriétés. Alors, on est satisfait de la réponse du commissaire et puis on va certainement adresser les recommandations du mieux qu'on pourra dans le futur. Merci.